And welcome everybody to this week's live stream coming to you from the Huckabee Theater just outside of Nashville where we'll be doing our television show this weekend on TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network. I'm sure you're going to be watching unless you might be one of those people who are lucky enough to have tickets to be in the theater audience tonight, which I hope you will be. But if not, uh, be sure and watch it this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, it is at 8 and 11 Eastern, 7, 10 Central. And on Sunday, it is at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. You can also catch it on Newsmax on Sunday as well. Pam Case is senior producer of the show. She joins me here as she does every week. And uh, we got a long slate of things to go through, don't oh, we? Oh, my gracious. Uh, the folks have worked hard on this for us today. Yeah, it, so it's going to be, be fun. And we hope that if you're joining us right now, you will know that you can send questions in the chat. If you want greater visibility, send us a super chat. We have moderators that will be watching for your questions, and we'll get to as many as we can. Or let me say as, as many as we want to. That's what we will do. Uh, but join us right away. Now, I always like to remind you from the very beginning, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but if we get 1,500 likes, we do this each week, it's like, okay, there's a bonus, there's a little extra serendipity here, but only if we get enough response from you, our viewers, and if we get 1,500 likes on the uh, live stream today, at the end of the live stream, we're going to show you something. Well, it, let's just say it's fascinating, interesting, and it's other things as well, you'll see. Well, a bunch of crazy leftists on social media attacked one of my guests on the show just because they dared come and talk to me and be on the show. I'm talking about the amazing trio of phenomenal entertainers uh, Chapel Heart. They were just awesome. We loved them. They owned this stage like very few ever have, and they were just a delight to work with. Their personalities are just electric and alive. Um, we absolutely adored every single one of them and every minute we had with them. But apparently not everybody enjoyed the fact that they were here. We want to roll back the tape to see, um, well, here's what happened. Uh, I guess we're going to show a little bit of, is that right? What's that? Oh, oh, I see. We will roll back the tape. I, I get you now to see what Joe uh, has to say about taking his son off the streets. And Democrats, they're really nosediving lately. We're going to look at some of their best moments. Well, for me, I'd call it their best moments. We do have a lot of topics to get through today. And one thing you can do is motivate my producers to take time covering more important topics from the week. And that's smash that like button. I said earlier, I mean it. We'll get 1,500 likes today. We extend the live stream just enough to show you an extraordinary video. If we don't get to 1,500 likes, well, we just pull the plug and we walk away. And you miss it. You don't get to see it. It's going to be that simple. All right. Um, Pam, we have a pre-show poll. What did yes, we Yes, we do. Out? All right. This is a pre-show poll. Our, our team pushed out a little earlier. We had over 300 votes for, um, involved in this today. They asked, which do you think is most likely a government drone? <laughs> Joe Biden, birds, bees, giraffes. That's a weird question. It is a weird question. Thanks, guys. 73% uh -huh. uh, say Joe. Of course, mm. birds at 12%, bees follow at 11 with giraffes at 3%. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have picked the giraffe. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and that's a weird po Was somebody on something when they came up with that one? I don't know. They'll have to let us know. We're, uh, guys, were you on something? He wants to know. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I'm going to have to figure where that one came from. It's, it's a little different. Okay, <laughs> we always try to pick out a favorite comment from last week's live stream. Somebody that uh, sent something in that we just thought was great. Um, this is really kind of more in a form of a question. It's from Harry, uh, and I believe it's pronounced Mass... Ma is it Massiolek? That's anyway. how I would say it, Massiolek. Harry. Mm. Hey, Harry. It's from Harry. <laughs> Harry M. And he said this, I'm in favor of yearly cognitive tests for all high government officials 75 or older. <laughs> a good idea, Harry. I would probably lower that age down to 25, because that would catch AOC and some of the other ones that we really do need to get a cognitive test for as well. I don't think it's just age. It has a lot to do with uh, life skills, experiences. 
But certainly when a person does get into the advanced senior years, there's, let's face it, a greater likelihood that there may be some cognitive disconnect. Not for everybody, but surely for some. Well, I've got a question for you this week. Did the January 6th committee change your mind about anything? In fact, did you even pay attention to it? Please leave your answers in the chat or in the comments section below. We'd love to get as many as we can get. And of course, as we've said before, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, uh, and also hit the like button because at 1,500 likes, you get a little extra today. And I think you're going to want it. All right. Um, we started out talking about Chapel Heart, this wonderful group of uh, young ladies who was with us last week on the show. And they are just on fire. Their career is taking off uh, brilliantly as it should. And when you hear them, you think, whoa, yeah, these girls are going places. When they sang at the Grand Ole Opry, they got three standing ovations, which is just, I mean, that just doesn't happen for almost anyone. So it's pretty, pretty big deal. Three well, they were back ovations. on the Opry that night that we were, uh, they, we had them on our show Saturday yep. night. They were on the Opry that night as well and absolutely killed it. You know, they're, they're, we just love them. Uh, it's hard not to because they're so vivacious and just cordial and, you know, they're everything you hope for in entertainers. Absolutely. And I want to say this too, if it's okay. When we book a guest for yeah. our show, um, like a Chapel Heart, it's not like we book them based on any kind of political affiliation. It's none of those things. It's about their entertainment value and what they're going to bring. And when we know that our audience is going to fall in love with them. And so that's what's most interesting about yeah. this whole thing we're going to share because that's not top of mind for us. Well, to be fair, in five years of doing the show and having comedians and singers and magicians and acrobats, which are not in a political realm at all, I've never, not once, initiated a political question to any of those guests, ever. Right. If they bring something up, I let them, because I'm not going to say, oh, no, 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 no. Right. But I never, ever have brought up a political or a cultural or a philosophical question to one of our guests that was not here specifically for that purpose. I just wouldn't do that because I want to promote their careers. I want to promote their craft. And quite frankly, people in the entertainment business, um, you know, they're not ideological. They're trying to entertain us and make us forget about some of these arguments and debates. And these gals certainly did it. Okay, here's the story. So Chapel Hearts on the show. They're great audience here, loves them, wonderful. But because they were on my show on TBN, some of their fans got mad at them and said some terrible things. I want you to see the kind of things that were said to them. Here's one. Uh, this is from Instagram accounts. This is one from Heidi, Heidi D. It says, no, Huckabee, ugh. And says, representation can go both ways. Powerful community action along with cultural lines that challenges and oppressive capitalist systems are propping up white Christian nationalism, a.k.a. fascism for dollars. American pride. I'm thinking, what in the world does that even mean? These girls were here to sing. We loved them. It was nothing about white Christian nationalism. And the only fascism that I'm seeing are the people who basically say that if you don't sing only in the forums that they recommend, that they approve of, that they will cancel you. That, my friend, is fascism. That is not tolerance and it's not for diversity. Here is one from Taylor, the one and only. She says, you must be desperate. Huckabee and TBN, pass. We all just, you, you all just made the wrong turn. I don't think they did. They had a great time. Too bad, Taylor, the one and only. You must think pretty highly of yourself since you're the one and only. Good luck with that. And then I'm a McDonald too. Wonderful. Huckabee Show. Time to unfollow from Instagram and unsubscribe from YouTube. Bye, Chapel Heart. Really? Because somebody that you like is on a show that you don't like, you now distance yourself, not from the show, which we expect, but from the entertainer that you supposedly like? That's irrational. And by the way, it's sick. This is from, um, I guess it's ICOM7. It says, so heartbroken to see you on Huckabee's show. His past statements on the LGBTQ community are hateful and dangerous. Please tell me what those are because I don't know what they are. Uh, I've not been hateful that I'm aware of. I do have a strong 
uh, commitment to biblical understanding about marriage. If that makes me hateful, uh, I'm just so sorry about that, but uh, I don't hate anybody. I have friends who are in the LGBTQ community, and that might surprise you, but I do, and I love them as friends, and they know where I stand on the issue of marriage, and they love me anyway, and I love them anyway, and it's too bad this person hasn't a clue about me. This one says, not to mention his daughter's alliance with fascist elements. I'll have to tell Sarah about that because I think she will be quite surprised. And here's one. Uh, this is from Gay Geek 1982. That's subtle. It says, I love y'all, talking to Chapel Heart, but Mike Huckabee is a terrible man, wishing you lots of great things and love. At least she doesn't turn on the group for it. And th these are from Twitter, by the way. And this is from Mary. Uh, apparently said, uh, no, he's not. Please listen to the words and move hate aside. Stop letting people polarize, politicize everything. We're all Americans. Thank you, Mary. One sane voice in all of these. Uh, Kathy Callahan uh, tweets out and says, okay, I'm out. Huckabee, ooh. And then take back OC, whatever that is. Ladies, Huckabee is a disgusting, seditious traitor. I'm not just a traitor. I'm a seditious traitor. <laughs> not a good look for you. Get smarter. Seditious. I've been called some weird stuff. I don't think I've ever been called seditious yes. before. <laughs> Delicious? Yes, I get called that all the time. But seditious? Nah. And this is, this is a great name. Crazy Kenny Crypto. But the comment, not so funny. Ugh. Huckabee, just ugh. You guys are great with great energy, songs, lyrics, and an amazing message, but I simply refuse to do anything with that family. I'll catch you guys on some other program. Well, good. Hope you will. And I hope you'll buy all their music and just uh, sorry that you don't like us too, but I don't care. I'm so troubled by this, Pam. Mm -hmm. I may... It may require half a baby aspirin for me to get to sleep tonight. I'm just not sure, but this is, this is just very hurt. I, I don't know if I can go on. I think you'll be fine, sir. I bet I will. <laughs> I bet I will. I think you will. Anyway, this is the junk we got to put up with <laughs> for trying to help a group that we absolutely love. Just another day at the office, <laughs> for sure. <sighs> Crazy people out yeah. there. Crazy people. Okay, are we going to play that last little bit from to show the audience that's on the live stream today? That little clip from, yeah, yeah. Let's see this, just, just show you the audience. Now the good news is, there was enormous positive reaction to them being on the show. And uh, I'm not going to show you all of it because I just want, I wanted to show you the nasty stuff just to kind of let you see what we deal with. But there were so many wonderful, effusively positive comments about Chapel Heart being here. And anybody who didn't enjoy them being here, frankly, you know, I don't know of anyone who didn't enjoy them. They just didn't enjoy that they were here. Right. That's so right. that's fine. You know what we want? If you got to hate me to love them, fine. I want you to love them because they've got a wonderful future ahead of them. And all we want to do is to make sure it's as great as it can be because they deserve it. And by the way, they mentioned they wanted to come back. They did, didn't they? Yes, they yes, did. Yes, they did. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, I don't think we can expect ticket requests from From some anybody of these in folks. that stack, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I don't okay. think they're going to be here in the we'll audience. We'll be all right. That's okay. We'll get by somehow. Okay, we got a lot to get to. Let's get to it. Um, you know, Joe Biden just dropped my microphone here. Let's pick that up. Uh, Joe Biden has made some comments through the years, and we put a, a little side-by-side -side between Joe Biden's speech on the Senate floor and the reality of his own son, Hunter. I think you'll find it rather interesting. If you have a piece of crack cocaine, no bigger than this quarter, that I'm holding in my hand. A law that says, if you're caught with that, you go to jail for five years. Under our forfeiture statutes, you can, the government can, take everything you own. They must be taken off the street. 
Well, there you have it from his own lips. They must be taken off the streets. So I guess he will be pushing for the indictment, arrest, and imprisonment of his son, Hunter. I'm not trying to make fun of that. I just want you to understand that Joe says one thing, but he means something quite different. John Kennedy, senator in Louisiana, is up for re-election. He's got an ad. I think this is beautiful. There are those in the far left who are calling for defunding the police. I think his answer for that may be pitch perfect. Violent crime is surging in Louisiana. Woke leaders blame the police. I blame the criminals. Look, if you hate cops just because they're cops, the next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. <laughs> I love that. I mean, th that's really it, isn't it? Got right to the point, didn't If you, you don't like cops, but you get in trouble, who do you call? A crackhead? No, you call the cops. And this week, by the way, has been a horrible week for cops. Several mm -hmm. have been shot yes. in Connecticut, Raleigh, North Carolina. It's been a terrible, terrible week. I don't know how people um, have the courage to be cops these days. The lack of respect, uh, the dangers they face, and the lack of support they get from so many people in the political realm, from mayors and governors and senators and congressmen, it's disgusting. Uh, I think we need to be grateful for those who serve in the blue and do everything we can to show our support for them. All right, I want to go to Stacey Abrams, the uh, gubernatorial candidate in Georgia who actually won the race in 2018, but it was stolen from her because the election was rigged. Of course, she can say that, and that's fine, and all the Democrats can say that election was rigged and stolen and she should have been the governor and she actually won. No penalty for that. Donald Trump even suggests that the 2020 election was rigged. Well, he's, he's an insurrectionist, all there is to it. He's a threat to democracy. But... One of the reasons that I was glad Stacey Abrams did not win in 2018, and I pray to God she does not win next month, is because of the radical view of abortion. And she talked to Shannon Bream at Fox News Sunday last week, and I want you to listen carefully to her understanding of the issue of the sanctity of every human life. Come, Governor, where would you draw the line? 15 weeks, viability, 36 weeks, what's the limit? Where, what I've always said is that abortion is a medical decision that should be made by a doctor and the woman, and that the point of viability as determined by a doctor should always take into consideration the life and health of a woman. That should be the standard. But the arbitrary standards of timelines ignore the medical reality that it is a fallacy. We know exactly when a pregnancy starts, that we know exactly where we are in the system, I mean, in the, in the term. The most amazing thing she said was, basically, we don't know when a pregnancy starts. Did she not take biology class in the 10th grade? Most of us did. You see, these, this is the party of science, and they don't know when a pregnancy starts? Well, let me try to explain it in simple and non-graphic terms. It's when male sperm connects with female egg, and there's conception. And from that moment, a brand new DNA is created with 23 chromosomes from the mother, 23 from the father. There's a 46 uh, uh, chromosomes that now create a brand new life. Unlike the mother or the father, its DNA is unique, never been before, never been again. And that's the beginning of pregnancy. And I thought until recent times, until Democrats started trying to play scientists, everybody understood that conception is when a pregnancy starts. So if Stacey becomes the governor of Georgia, I guess Georgia will be confused about when pregnancy starts. But you can kill that baby right up until the moment of birth. God help us all. Uh, that is absurd. I, I want to say that I've been saying Republicans need to get bold and push back on this nonsense that we are anti-women. And J.D. Vance, who is running for Senate against Tim Ryan in Ohio, I think gives us a perfect example of how Republicans ought never to be put on the defensive and to push back and push back hard on this Democrat nonsense that if you are for life and if you believe in the sanctity of every human life, that somehow you're anti-woman. J.D. Vance just nails Tim Ryan's hide to the wall. Watch. 
thing the media and Congress and Ryan, they talk about this all the time. The thing they never mentioned is that poor girl was raped by an illegal alien, somebody that should have never been in this state in the first place. You voted so many times against border wall funding, so many times for amnesty, Tim. If you had done your job, she would have never been raped in the first place. Do your job on border security. Don't lecture me about opinions I don't actually have. That, my friend, is how it's done right there. It's an absolutely brilliant takedown by J.D. Vance. Now, listen, if you really enjoy this show, we're on every Friday at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, unless stated otherwise. We shoot this when I'm in Nashville, but with the holidays coming up, we're going to have a more volatile, that means uh, unpredictable schedule. So if you want to know what we have going on, the best way to find out, subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell. And, of course, hit the like uh, like the video, and when you comment, that helps a lot with the algorithm. Otherwise, there are forces in the world of cybersecurity, cyberspace, that try to throttle us back, so not that many people watch. That's why we love to have you hit that like button. And if we get 1,500 likes today before the stream ends, we'll extend the live stream and show you something really, really special. If you're having a good time, click that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. That means they might even let more people see it. Hard to believe that you have some company that decides who gets to see what we do and who doesn't. Yes. Based on they don't like me or my political views. There you go. Uh, let's take a couple of questions, and we've got a lot of videos I want to still get to. Absolutely, Governor. Um, Time One Joe Forgo says, Mike Huckabee, I think you should run for president. You would make a great president. We get that every time, but it's yeah. always nice to push that <laughs> out there. Uh, Kenny Anderson says, does Tulsi leaving the Dems really surprise you? It, it doesn't in a way, but it's a bold move, and I uh, really have to tell you I'm impressed with the uh, boldness with which she has done it. And she didn't just say, you know, they didn't treat me right, so I left. No, she outlines very clearly that she feels the Democrats have completely abandoned constitutional principles of due process. She believes that the Democrats have become heavy-handed, that they are adopting things that are insane, uh, particularly the issue of uh, radical transgenderism. She's very explicitly clear about what she finds objectionable, objectionable about today's Democrat Party. And I've always liked her and respected her. She was on our show, sure. um, enjoyed our conversation, loved to have her back. I don't know what her plans are. She has not announced that she's going to become a Republican. Uh, she just announced she will not be a Democrat. And I find it refreshing that she had the courage of her convictions and the willingness to say so. Yeah, absolutely. Kenneth Fielder is asking today, Governor, what do you see coming in the near future pertaining to the push of electric vehicles? How can it affect everything? Well, one way it'll affect it, I mean, the government is trying to move us in that direction, whether the economy is ready for it or not. So what you're going to continually see if Democrats stay in power is increasing incentives uh, to buy an electric vehicle, like you'll get a, a credit. You might get, uh, you know, a $10,000 uh, credit or a check from the government if you'll go buy an electric car because it'll help bring the cost closer to a conventional car. Uh, they may impose a tax on gasoline cars that's higher than on electric cars. That's another way to disincentivize you buying a conventional car. I think there are um, efforts the government will put to push greater levels of infrastructure. And quite frankly, if we're going to have more electric cars, we better have it. I mean, California is a great example. They say you cannot have a conventional car past the year 2035. But if all the people who currently own an electric car in California plugged them in, it shut the whole electric system down because their grid can't handle it. Mm. So this is, this is the stuff of which the left is made. They don't make good sense. I'll tell you what's kind of interesting. Some of the people who've been the champions of the left, they're no longer left enough. They're not crazy enough. And we're talking about some of the crazy people aren't crazy enough. Here's an example. AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, has a town hall in New York, her district. And you'd think, well, she'd be the toast of the town up there. They, they surely love her, all these left-leaning people. But I want you to see what happens, because it turns out that even AOC, as far left as she is, she's not far enough for her constituents. Watch. Congresswoman, none of this matters unless there's a nuclear war, which you voted to send arms and weapons to Ukraine. Tulsi Gabbard, she's left the Democratic Party because there are some who are hawks. 
I believed in you, and you became the very thing you sought to fight against. That's what you've become. You are the establishment, and you are the reason why everybody will end up in a nuclear war unless you choose to stand up right now and denounce the Democratic Party. Wow. Those are her constituents, and they're mad at her because she's not radical enough for them. She's more than radical enough for me, and I think for most people in America. But that's where we're headed, folks. This is The left is never satisfied never satisfied. Now, um, I want to show you one of the great tragedies of the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, we're going to get to some more questions, but I got to show you this. It, it's really tragic, and I, I want to just roll the tape. I'm going to just kind of give you a narration, but this is what we're seeing in the aftermath of the uh, horrible bombing. You see homelessness, you see litter, you see just really a desecrated landscape. It is just heartbreaking to think that people are having to live in these conditions because of uh, a horrible invasive war. Oh, wait a minute. I'm so sorry. This is not Ukraine. No, I. Th this is not a war-torn country devastated by bombs and invading soldiers. Actually, those were scenes from Oakland, California which, by the way, is Kamala Harris's hometown. And it looks like it's been hit by the Russian war machine. So you just got to ask, is she ready for prime time? Well, she serves up another big old bowl of unique Kamala kale word salad. Let's watch. When you, you know, when you see our kids, and I truly believe that they are our children, they are the children of our country, of our communities, I, I mean, our future is really bright if we, if we prioritize them and therefore prioritize the climate crisis and the need to address it. What if we think about our children prioritizing the need to bring our country together? That's amazing, isn't it? It is. By the way, the, the best part of that, our staff did a great job of building the graphics for Absolutely. the salad. I think we just need to make that a regular weekly word salad segment. I think so. I think we're going to have to because she gives us plenty of material. But, I mean, she creates a bigger bowl than you can get at the third trip to the salad bar at Golden Corral. No I mean, this gal lays it out there. Unbelievable, the stuff that she keeps saying. Let's take a couple of questions. All right, let's do that. Uh, all right, Governor. Uh, Sue Prov is asking, will the Saudi refusal to Joe Biden push him to open drilling domestically until science provides uh, better answers for carbon issues? Sue, it would for any rational leader who really was looking after his own people first and foremost, but no, it will not move him to do that because he is completely owned and he is sold out to the far left and so he's not going to do what would help you, what would help me, what would help every American. Uh, and that's uh, clean and yet reliable and plenteous United States created energy. Nope, he's not going to do that. He'll go hat in hand back to the Saudis. Uh, he'll go to the Venezuelans, try to get oil from there, which, by the way, is the dirtiest oil on the planet. I don't know if you understand, but there's different degrees of oil that comes out of the ground. Some of it's fairly clean. It can be refined easily. What comes out of Venezuela is nasty and filthy. It's the dirtiest oil on the earth. It's the most polluting oil on the earth. And that's what we're going to end up doing. It makes no sense at all. But then again, most of what this administration is doing doesn't. Dale Eladakis is asking this afternoon, Governor, do you think we should have term limits and do you still support a flat tax? I absolutely believe in term limits. I believe in them. We already have them for the president, which is what it should be. We need them for the Senate, the House. Uh, let me be clear. We need them for the Supreme Court. I mean, I don't think any position ought to be lifetime. Uh, it just lends itself to laziness and corruption. And I'm for term limits across all three branches of government. The flat tax, what I really support is it is a flat tax, but it's called a fair tax. And here's the difference. A flat tax is flat, but it's based on our income. I think we should not tax those things which are productive. We shouldn't penalize productivity, which is what an income tax does. And the tax system we have now taxes 
our work, it taxes our savings, it taxes our investments. In other words, everything that's productive, we penalize it by taxes. Our taxes ought to be based on our consumption. So the fair tax is a flat tax, but it's assessed on what we consume, not what we produce, because production is the key to a healthy economy. Love to talk more about that, and I will, uh, but not today, because we're going to run out of time before I do. Uh, speaking of how well we're doing in the economy, because some people think it's just going great, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was asked about the economy, and I guess she sees something really different than most of us do. With high inflation and tightening monetary policy in many advanced countries, um, emerging markets from really all of these factors are suffering um, many stresses. So there's a lot to talk about. But from the perspective of the United States, I think the United States is doing very well. I'm just having a hard time processing it. From the perspective of the United States, I think we're doing very well. Where does she live? What does she do? Does she ever rub shoulders with real people who are buying bacon, bread, and biscuits out there in the grocery store? I don't think so, because I'm not hearing people say, oh, I've never had it so good. COVID lockdown. She must be locked down somewhere. My gosh. <laughs> Let her out. Let her Somebody. go to the store. Let her pump her own gas for a time. Now, she's no better nor worse than the mouthpiece of the White House, Corrine Jean-Pierre, who uh, always seems to think that no matter how bad things are and how totally uh, failing the policies of this White House are, things are just going great. This is her most recent comment. We're, we're seeing what we're seeing is that we are in a transition. We had this strong economic growth because of the of the work that this president had done in the past 18 months. And now what we're seeing is a transition into stable and steady growth. I love that. <laughs> that is so funny. It, it reminds me of the scene in uh, Batman where the Joker is coming out and he's walking in the hospital. He's exploding blowing up behind, behind him. him yes, when he's he just out. like happy about it all. <laughs> That's what it looks like there. The White House is on fire, cars crashing. John Travolta reprising his character from Pulp Fiction is in yes. the background. The whole thing is total chaos. And she's singing, everything's coming up roses. She's the new Ethel Merman. Oh, my gracious. It's Younger good. people don't even know who I'm talking about. Yeah, well, Trust me. Look it up. It's good. Yeah, it, it really is. And <laughs> there is a it. song that goes along with it. Uh, by the way, we do have... 1,500 yes, likes. Yes, we do. We, we got them. a few beats before. That's that's good news because now we're going to get to throw a little uh, extra in there. But let's take a few questions before we do. All right, absolutely. We have a question from uh, Fur Balami. I just love Fur Balami. <laughs> um, hi, as a blue dog Democrat, I saw Tulsi Gabbard finally said what most of us have been saying. Now a poll has her third in line on GOP on the GOP presidential bid. Republicans jumped on her quickly. So what do you think? I doubt she would run for president as a Republican. Uh, you know, I think her views are more mainstream Democrat. It's just that there aren't many mainstream Democrats anymore. Uh, at least they're not in leadership positions. Quite frankly, I believe there are a lot more what I call mainstream Democrats um, who are Democrats that I have known my whole life and have grown up with. Maybe have slightly different opinions than me, but they're not crazy. You know, they, they don't. They don't take the position that we ought to be a Marxist nation. They don't take the position that we are a vile, evil, racist nation. Uh, they believe in a strong national defense. Some of them are even pro-life and pro-Second Amendment. And those are the Democrats that I have known. The ones that are leading things today, I don't recognize them as Democrats. I recognize them as socialist and Marxist. And it's not a healthy look, not for the country at all. Let's take one more question, then we're going to show that video. All right. Sh all right, so here we go from, uh, I'm not sure who this one is from, uh, Mind Your Own Business, <laughs> NYC. Well, when your daughter was in the White House, all she did was lie, but I guess you taught her well. Ooh. Well. Wow, that's how we're going to uh, come close to wrapping up today, Gov. Yeah, we could just pull the switch on it. No, I would love for you to just tell me how my daughter lied. I think she was 
pretty effective. Now, she defended the White House and its policies. The good thing is she actually had something to defend. She could defend the fact that Donald Trump kept his promise to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, that Donald Trump made us energy independent for the first time in 75 years, that Donald Trump brought uh, and brokered a historic peace agreement in the Middle East called the Abraham Accords, that Donald Trump got rid of five regulations for every new one that was done, and it opened up the capacity for small businesses to survive and thrive. He brought a record tax cut that resulted in the average American family having more than $4,000 per household per year, unlike it is with the Biden administration, who has taken a full month of our paycheck away from us with a 41-year high inflation. He was moving rapidly to secure the border. We had the best border security that we'd had in about 20 years. And uh, had he been there another four years, he would have fully secured the border. People were being treated humanely. They weren't dying in the back of trucks like they are regularly now at the border, uh, stopping a lot of the human trafficking. And so, um, you know, uh, he also did something in the way of prison reform that he didn't get enough credit for, and that is the First Step program. Restorative justice, where people who are languishing in federal prisons unnecessarily for nonviolent crimes uh, were given second chances, which most of us would think would be a good thing. Even liberals thought that was a good thing. They just couldn't stand the fact that it was Donald Trump who did it. So when you talk about my daughter at the White House, I think she stood her ground pretty well against the idiots like Jim Acosta and other goons who uh, tried to always just attack her on a personal level. But she had a good story to tell. I, I realize it's harder for Corrine Jean-Pierre to tell a good story because there's not much to work with in this administration. Okay, just to show you how nutty, utterly nutty, our culture has become, there is a male student, and I I'm going to let the tape play out because, honestly, it's a little awkward and uncomfortable to even discuss this. So I'm going to let it play out. I want you to listen very carefully. There is a mom who is standing before a school board, and she is talking about what her own daughter witnessed in a classroom. There are two things I want you to get from this. One, listen to what happened to her daughter in a classroom. And then I want you to hear what the superintendent of the school had to say about it as to whether it was all okay. Watch. On May 17th, my seventh grade daughter, along with every other classmate, watched a boy in her class masturbate. I don't think that this is anything outside the norm. Uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's not normal. That, okay. that is not a good stance. Yeah, the superintendent did not think that that was all that unusual. Um, I, I have no words. I, I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely, that would be a criminal act in most communities if someone exposes himself and carries on like that in front of young girls in a school. And that's, that's criminal behavior. That's not just yes, inappropriate. Sir. It's yes, certainly sir. that. It's disgusting and vulgar, but it's criminal behavior. You're subjecting uh, school-age girls to witness something that they shouldn't have to put up with. And the response from the school, rather than saying, hey, we're going to call the police and have them take this kid out and, and charge him, or we're going to expel him? Nope. Well, I think what he was doing is pretty normal. I'd say that superintendent isn't very normal, is he? No, absolutely. I'm shocked, mm. truly. Well, I hope you're normal enough to subscribe to our channel <laughs> and uh, that you'll hit the notification bell so you can always uh, know when we're going to be back. Be sure to leave comments in the... Uh, section below on the comments and questions section. You can do it even after we're off the live stream. We always are glad that you've joined us. That notification bell, you just heard it go off. Hit that too and the like button 